And I'm not sure how Khan Academy works with handing in essays for them to grade. Is it usually an essay that's part of a test? Yes, yes. At, the end, at the end of it, it asks if you want to take an essay, but I haven't done it yet. Okay, why don't we kill two birds with one stone? Why don't we use the prompt, the essay prompt from Khan Academy? So that way you get to hand it in for grading and you get to send a copy to me. Okay. You will need to send me, I guess, on the screen as it shows up, as the article shows up, you will need to take a picture and send me. Okay. It's, if that way it saves you doing two essays. Um, it's okay for you to start doing more essays, but we want to make sure you're writing the right thing. Right? So let's see your first essay. Let's see how, like, let's see how you are right now before we start to try to improve uh, on, on what you already know. Of course, you already know about the literary devices, and that is already 50% of it. Uh, I don't know how many, have you, how many um, SAT essays have you looked up online? Where you get about four. You, you looked up about four. Yes, ma'am. Where you have the article as well as the essay. Oh, I thought you meant like sample, like reading a sample. Are you talking about me? Okay. The sample essays I, I told you to read, those are different. Those are your um, common application essays. Like when you're sending uh, applications to colleges, most of them will need you to write an essay. But the common app, and you said most of the colleges you want to go to subscribe to the common app, right? Yes, ma'am. That's perfect. So you're going to only write an essay, a college essay once, unlike other kids who maybe three of their colleges use the common app and the other three have their own individual application. Then they have to write the essay four times. Because uh, many times the questions are not the same. That's good for you. You only have to write it once. Work. Like, that once has to be very good, super good. Okay, so let's do it that way. Do an essay as part of your academy um, essay, SAT, so as the as the article shows up as you're reading it, you need to take a picture and send them to me. So okay. the point of me having can't read your essay um, without seeing the actual article. Okay. Um, any other strategies and tips you stumbled upon? Not, not yet, ma'am. Okay. So I need you to be stumbling upon different ones because again, that's a strategy that's going to bail you out because you're starting your SAT prep pretty late. And I was tell my son, you guys are pretty fortunate because the fact that your SAT is um, in September, that gives you an unfair advantage over the other kids who have had to do their SATs by March in their junior year. So you guys have extra time to study and get it right. Where other kids had to be studying, doing you know school, having midterms and activities, you, you guys get get to do it. Not only do you have like almost six months extra, because it is six months. March to September is six months. You have half a year extra to study. Not only that, you don't have the interruption of extracurricular activities, and you don't even have the interruption of school because your school day is pretty short compared to what it was before. So you guys have it super easy. 
and you have no excuse to not get a good grade. I don't care who you are. I don't even care when you started practicing. Because the point is, everybody got more time. You better use it, it's up to you. There's a saying that says, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. The British call their desserts pudding. And once you've made a pie, a cherry pie or an apple pie or something, the only way we can know if it's good is, is not by looking at it, it's by cutting into it, getting a slice and eating it. So the only way we're going to know that you've done a good job is by your grade. Okay, so we've touched on the essay, we've touched on writing. I think it was the young man, uh, the young um, Indian, Asian man, uh, boy, <laughs> on his YouTube channel, that says something like um, that the writing section is probably the easiest section to learn because it's only so many grammatical rules, right? And this book, for instance, has identified 24 of the ones kids get wrong most. Doesn't mean there aren't other ones. So that means every kid will not get all 24 wrong, but kid A can get maybe one to eight wrong and not be good at those and get uh, um, nine to 24 right. Kid B may get one to eight right. Get, you know, so you just study it all, just in case. So there'll be some, like I said, some of them that you, you're good at already, but we're not interested in good, we're interested in best. We're skipping better. We're, we're going straight from good to best. Okay. What's our time? 7.23. Um, I would like us to, to do a reading passage, so let's go to Khan. Can you pull up a reading passage? You know how in the reading section we have like five passages? Can we pull up yeah. one? I want us to do it together. Do you know how how um, how many minutes you have per passage? Um, I think it's like twenty minutes for twenty. I think it's twenty five questions for twenty minutes. I'm not sure. Twenty five questions. I have 20, 25 minutes for twenty questions. Something like that. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. So so the one thing you need to make sure of is that you're sure of all these things before your exam day. In fact, you will have memorized how many minutes in a section, you just will know it. If it's 25 minutes, 50 minutes, you just know it. And then you will know um, by dividing that number of minutes by the number of questions, then you should know how much time you have per passage. So for the reading, it comes to about 12 minutes for each passage. So 12 times five, you probably have 60 minutes. So that means for this passage, you need 12 minutes to read it and answer. And as you practice, you kind of not, you don't want to be using the whole 12 minutes. You want to make sure you can get it down to like nine minutes, you know, 10 minutes, you know, that type of thing. You don't want to be using the whole 12 minutes. And faith, when you practice enough times, when you read enough of these passages, you will know when you're answering, you will know when you're going over time without constantly looking at the clock, without constantly looking at your watch. You, or, you know, it's only practice that can make it that way. You know when those gymnasts are doing their flow routine? Yes, sir. Yeah? They, yes, sir. they have practiced so much that they know 
if they step out of the, you know, if they do one of those that, you know, when they run and they do those, they're running tumble somersault things. Yes, ma'am. And they're going somersault, 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 somersault. And they got to end within the square. And if they step out, they know they stepped out because they, they already have a feel for how much space they have. And the only way they can do that is by practicing like a couple of hundred times every day kids like that they practice every day did you know that and they practice for four five hours every single day for years so one's going to olympics i'm not joking because they're going to meet the best in the world so if i'm asking you to spend two hours a day it's not the end of the world but i want you to have read so many of these passages that you will know what it feels like you will know when you're going over 10 minutes you will know what it feels like in the space of time do you understand what i'm saying yes ma'am because the one thing you don't have time for is to be timing every everyone in the exam room all you have is 60 minutes don't be wasting minutes writing down okay i'm starting at 9 22 okay i have uh, uh, by 9 uh, 42 I, I have 40 minutes left. You're wasting time already. Okay? So you're going to dig in, you're going to do the passage, and you're going to know when you're wasted, you've wasted enough time. Okay, let's go over this. You read silently, and as you scroll down, I'll be reading too. Oh, stop. Uh, do we have all the questions available or do you have to turn the We have the questions. Okay, let's click through the questions. Remember, we're trying to use the strategy to see if it works for you. Okay, question one is a question we can't answer um, halfway through the passage. Okay, move on to two. This question also can't be answered until we've read most of the passage. Move on. Ah, in line seven, impunged most nearly means. Okay, so what we would do on the paper test, we would go to line seven and put a little star on the line there so that when we start reading, we know we're looking out for that word. And right there and then we can answer that question. Okay, keep moving. Okay, we can't answer that question until we're done. Move on. Okay, so uh, these type of questions need a lot of focus because the first question, uh, the, the question four, is asking about, uh, I think, Rachel's attitude or something like that to her father, and you can't answer five without answering uh, four. So, this is a little diff a little more difficult because what you want to do with this question you want to um probably mark on your sheet of paper line 15 16 line 21 22 line 22 you understand you want to mark them and then as you're getting close to line 15 then you come and look at this question which choice provides the best evidence for the answer the question before then you're reading it you're reading from 15 down and you're looking at those the statement rachel something 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 and it ends with the word remark and then you think does that do it nah, maybe maybe not you know so it's it's just a strategy okay move on uh veneration what does veneration most nearly mean I think I know what it means, but um, yeah, I can see the answer already. Okay, so keep moving on. So that, that question, you could answer it without necessarily having to finish the passage, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. The primary purpose of paragraphs, paragraph five and these lines is to, so whilst you're reading it, you've already marked line 15 to 29. 
And then you're trying to, um, maybe you could skim these answers and see, oh, okay. So by the time you've annotated your passage, okay, everywhere you see a little annotation that you've made is where you need to slow down your reading a little bit, right? Yes, ma'am. Because we've already figured out you can't read everything like you're studying it and trying to get everything. You know, you may not need to get everything, just the one, the areas where the, the questions come from. Okay, so by the time you see these lines, or you know, you've, you've, you've uh, highlighted lines 15 to 29, as you're skim reading, and then you get to this point, you know what you're going to do? You're going to slow down because you, there's a question coming from it. That's all of like uh, 13 or 14 lines. So now you slow down so that you get it. So that by the time you get it, to answer the question will be kind of easy. Like what's the primary purpose? So in this answer, you'll find the secondary purpose of that paragraph. You'll find the tertiary purpose and all that stuff. But they don't want those. They want the primary one, the main one. So you gotta be careful. Okay, move on. Probably one more question, right? One, two. It can reasonably be inferred that the relationship between Rachel's father and her aunt. Okay, we gotta move on. You gotta read everything to get to this question, right? Which choice provides the best evidence for the answer to the previous question? So now comes a little bit of, um, you know, like reading gymnastics. So now you've got line 13 to 14, line 31 to 34, and you know, so that's spread all over the passage. So you just create a technique that works for you. Okay, move on. Which conclusion? So we can't conclude until we've read everything. Okay, is that it? Okay, so now let's read the passage. There's one more. Mm -hmm. Okay, in these lines, the information about wealth serves mainly to do what? So again, you would have marked 52 to 55, so that as you're skim reading, uh, when you get to this point, you're slowing down because you know a question is coming from this point. Okay, so before you read, that's why practicing with the... Um, with a paper test is very important. You have 10 tests in your book. Every single one must be done. Assuming you're doing one test a week, which ideally you should be doing two or three, but if you do one test a week, then you're done with that book in 10 weeks. But I think it should take you about 15 weeks to do it because after you've done a test, you want to go over all the things you got wrong. You never want to do a test, get the score, and move on. What was the whole point of that test? The purpose of the test is for you, or the purpose of um, you practicing the test is for you to know your weak areas so you can strengthen them. So now you practice the test, you get your score, you move on. Your weak areas have not been worked on because you don't even know what they are so that would take you a good i guess 12 to 15 weeks just to make sure you've done a thorough job with that book not just taking the test but studying the answers okay if that's it let's go to the passage i don't know why i still feel excited okay so When you're ready, move on.
Are you still there? Yes, ma'am. Let's zoom out a bit so we can see all the all the questions, all the answers. Is that your answer? Yes, ma'am. Okay, move on.
Dustin started it. Dustin, I stopped the stream. I already turned it off. It's off. Is this kind of question number four is it's kind of hard to go back over the passage to get the impression because this is something that you kind of get the impression of when you read it right you agree with me can you hear me say yes ma'am i said question four it's it's um almost impossible to go back with the kind of time you're given to go and try to get an impression because that's what they're asking. The narrator implies that Rachel's attitude towards her father is. So if you didn't pick up on it whilst you're reading it, how, how do you go back to go and look for it? Because they don't say it, right? It's just the way they're relating that will tell you whether, you know, what the answer is. Okay, so that's why, you know, you kind of have to be able to skim, but yet get it. Okay, because now the next answer is based on the, on the, the, the previous answer. If the previous answer is wrong, your next answer is going to be wrong. See the problem? Which choice provides the best evidence for the answer to the previous? Oh, okay, you figure that out.
Okay. So I'll submit. So you got seven right out of how many? Eleven. Okay, so let's see the four you got wrong. Yeah. Okay. So which is the first one you got wrong? The number one. Number one? What was the question? Over the course of the passage, the main focus shifts from, what did you say? You said A. Did you say A? Yes, ma'am. Well, you said, a depiction of a family's strange dynamic to a character's wandering recollections of a distant past. But what's the answer? C. C. Two characters' reactions to an unexpected message to a character's anticipation of a journey oh so over the course of the passage the main focus shifts from okay so remember i told you you will practice the sat so much you'll begin to understand the, the way they expect the answers because they don't make it easy for you by giving you three completely erroneous answers and then only one right one. That was like fourth grade uh, reading comprehension. Now they're going to give you four answers that are kind of, it could be, it could be A, it could possibly be B, it could also maybe remotely be C. Um, now you have to look for the best one. Because what you chose could, could sounds good to me. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. But with you going over the passages, you begin to get how the SAT processes these questions and how, what their expectation is. I can't teach it. It's a feeling. It's a familiarity. The same as if when your parents send you to a new school, they can't go and make friends for you. Can they do that? Yeah. They can't go and be friendly for you. They can't go and be helpful to others for you. No. Getting familiar with these types of very closely related answers is something you will eventually get. Okay, move on. I'm just letting you know your answer is not too far off, but it's, it's still wrong. The next one you got wrong is, the narrator implies that Rachel's attitude towards her father, do you know the meaning of overtly? No, no. Outly, uh, um, not, not hiding it. Um, if you overtly dislike somebody, everybody n knows you dislike that person. If you're covertly, opposite of overt is covert, they use the word covert mainly when they're talking about a covert mission by the FBI. You know, they're on a, in a covert mission to find out if the prime minister of North Korea is really going to shoot missiles at America when he gets upset. It's a covert operation. It's a secret. Okay, so it's not overt. She's not out and out disrespectful of her dad, right? No, ma'am. So which one is it? It is mildly contemptuous. Yeah, it's very mildly. You know the meaning of con contempt? Contemptuous? No, ma'am. I'm not sure. I probably do, but I don't know. And you try to explain it based on the answer there? Why you show contempt for something? You're satisfied. No, the exact opposite. Oh, you're not satisfied. Google that word contempt. We want more of it. Google the word contempt. The feeling that a person or thing is beneath consideration, worth it. Yeah. 
So here's a bunch of, you know, seniors, they're hanging out. And then this little geeky sixth grader comes and like, hey, hey guys, what's up? You know, they're all t talking in deep voices. And they go, hey, hey, hey guys, what's up? And they look at him with a contemptuous look like, what is this little mosquito doing in our midst? Like, clear out of here. You know, um, what do you call him? Shrimp? <laughs> you know? So that's like contemptuous. Contemptuous. Yeah. Okay. So now you've learned a new kind of, a new word. So you see, also getting this right, I will say this is just a vocabulary type of problem that you had with this question. So now you've learned the vocabulary. So you can move on. This is next one, man. Okay. So when you look at your answer again, do you, do you really think that their relationship has been damaged? No, ma'am. Yeah. In the first place, they don't barely have a relationship, do they? No, ma'am. So we can't really say, I mean, they know of each other, but that's not enough to form a relationship. They may be relatives, but they don't really, they haven't related, other than maybe when she writes letters. So how much of a relationship can you have? So right there, it can be A. And the answer is what? B. It's strained as a result of their past conflicts. So let's, look, let's go to D. No, C. But it's a question of which one sounds better. I mean, it could, it could be C as well. Definitely not D, because nothing about finances really came up until the end when the dad was saying, oh, she happens to be wealthy, you know? Okay, so let's move on. So familiarity is being developed by you. I don't need it, you do. Okay, which conclusion does Rachel make based on the letter from her aunt? You said her father had made up a great deal about her due to his forgetfulness. Okay. Okay, so two things. She thinks her dad is senile. You know what senile means? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, usually you're talking about older people who are forgetful and, you know, kind of losing... The Brits, the British people say losing their marbles, you know, yes, <laughs> basically they're, they're not all together. Um, she thinks that of her dad, but really that she, she just says that she, he's not like that. Um, uh, her father made up a great deal about her due to his forgetfulness. So he's not really, no, that's not the case. Okay. So the answer is what, eh? Yes, ma'am. So all you can do is keep on doing what we've just done until you get better and better and better. And we're going to check how much better you get in a month. We've been doing these classes. I believe this is our third week, right? This is our like second and a half week because the first week we only did one, but we did a two hour lesson, but it was more you know, talking and trying to, you know, get to know you and get to know what your needs are. Okay. How much time do you have left? Is that the last question? Yeah. Oh, well, I got the last question right. Good for you. So you didn't do too badly because half of 11 is 5.5 and you got two whole questions. Well, one and one and a half questions right over the mid midpoint, the 5.5. So all we want to do is we want to increase that such that you're only getting one question right, if that. So out of five passages, you're only going to allow yourself to get one question right. That's going to be your improvement, okay? Yes, two questions. Did I say two, one question right? One question wrong. Uh, yes, ma'am. 
yeah. I understand what you meant. Yeah. So you will only allow yourself to get one question wrong eventually. But your goal will be to get them all right. Because you actually have the capability. You have the vocabulary to be able to do it. I won't say that of every single student of mine. Okay. I know I can I know you'll, you know, you already told me you're strong in English. I can see that already. Now we want to push your strength. What's the name of that young, that gymnast, the black gymnast? Uh, Simone Biles. Yes, she pushed. You know, when you see that her practicing, push, push, push. She didn't just become superwoman, you know, these multi, multi somersaults overnight. No, push, exercise, push, push until she can do these things almost with her eyes closed. Yeah, and that's where you want to be. You may not be going to the Olympics, but doing the SAT is your Olympics. So practice time. Okay, do we have any time left for math? We have two minutes. Two minutes? Okay, so that's good. I think we've done enough, okay? Um, we've done a reading passage. You're going to do an essay, and you're going to send it to me with the prompt you know, the article, and you got your grammar to work on. Um, every time you do a complete test, you're getting your math practice right there. When you do your math, say out of 60 questions, let's say you get 30 wrong, then you have 30 questions to work on. Out of the 30 questions you get wrong, if you look them up, you'll probably be able to figure out at least half of them and it's the remaining say quarter then that maybe even with them explaining it you're still not getting it those are the ones we're going to work on so for next week i want you to be prepared come prepared with your math questions we'll try to spend half the lesson next week doing math yeah okay ma'am okay um so you've got khan academy you've got an actual book test to do this weekend. You've got your quick walls to keep, you know, kind of pushing and pushing. Remember Simone Biles, push, push, push. You don't become a champion by not pushing. Um, and what else? Reading comprehension, practice, practice until you're only getting one wrong. If you must, if you insist on getting something wrong, then you only allow yourself one. Your score will go up to 700. You can make a 700. Um, the, the grade you're getting in both your, your, your sections, you can get just that grade in your, in your English alone, in the writing section. I can, you have the potential. It's a bit like my muscles, which don't exist. Mm -hmm. I have the potential to have, you see women with all those muscles that look like men? If I work out, I can, I can probably get those, but I don't want to. But if I did, and I'm doing 100 push-ups, and you suddenly see things popping out, my hidden muscles. And that's what I see in you. I see you have the potential to get a seven, over a 700 in the writing section. OK? Yes. But not right now. So let's see how you do by the end of next week. By the end of next week, we'll make it almost about a month that we've been doing this. I want to see your score. So you're going to do an SAT, a Khan Academy SAT test this weekend. And then you'll do one next weekend. That's the score we want to look at. And we want to compare to your first score. Okay? Okay. Okay. I'll see you next week. Bye, ma'am. Bye.